Welcome to the second of our Cinema 4D to Maya tutorials. In this tutorial we will be using pre-existing motion captured assets which are available with Maya to be the centre of a motion graphics and particle scene which shows the way that MASH can be integrated with Maya 2017's powerful dynamic nucleus particle system. We will be rendering this scene with Arnold, the powerful new render engine which ships in Maya 2017. The main thing I want to show with this tutorial is how Maya is able to create what appears like a complex animation incredibly quickly, much more so than we'd be capable with Cinema 4D, as for a start we will be using native tools such as MASH's Voxel Engine and the Arnold Render, which are only available as third-party plugins for Cinema 4D. The fact that these tools are native means that combining them with Maya's powerful N-Particle and Dynamics system is both straightforward and can be easily handed on to other Maya users even on other platforms, safe in the knowledge that everything will just work. Before we begin, if you have watched our first tutorial, you may have noticed yellow pop-up panels popping up whenever we scrolled over a tool, as well as the green highlighted brackets which denote items which are new for Maya 2017. These can be great for new users and students who are finding their way around Maya, but as you become more experienced, you may wish to switch these off. To do this, go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Preferences, and in the Interface panel, switch off Highlight What's New to get rid of the green square brackets. To get rid of the yellow pop-up messages, go to Help, and in the pop-up Help menu, just tick off Display Tool Clips and press Save. And now, yeah, no more yellow popovers and no more green brackets. The other thing we should check before we get going is that Arnold is properly installed. Let's go to the render menu and in the render, render using drop down, we can see that Arnold isn't available. If it isn't, don't worry, this is probably because Arnold hasn't installed itself as a plugin. Maya has a dedicated menu for working with plugins, which I find much more straightforward than the Cinema 4D plugin folder system, which requires constant restarts of the application. Let's go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. Let's move it over. Here we can see all the plugins that Maya has available to it. Here we can see MASH. For Arnold, which I have deliberately disabled for this example, we are looking for the m2a.bundle, which is here. Make sure that it has a tick by loaded and auto load, and Arnold should now be installed correctly. On a PC, the plugin manager works pretty much the same way. If we go to settings preferences, plugin manager, we can see all of our plugins here, just as we would on a Mac. The only difference is, is that the names denote straight to the location. And this is Arnold here. As you can see, the name is slightly different. It's mtoa.mml. And on this PC, we've got both loaded. Let's begin with getting some motion capture data into Maya. Maya comes with some great free examples which are available online at www.autodesk.com forward slash Maya hyphen creative market hyphen samples. Once these have been downloaded, these need to be placed into the example folders of Maya 2017 so that they can be easily accessible from the content browser, which is at Windows, General Editors, Content Browsers. And as we can see under Animation Motion Capture, we don't have anything here yet. On a PC, the example folder lives by default in Program Files, Autodesk, Maya 2017, Examples, Animation. On a Mac, find the Maya app in the Autodesk folder of the main applications folder, which is here. Here are my examples, which I've downloaded earlier. So let's find Autodesk. There we go. And we are going to Maya 2017. Right click on Maya application to show package contents. Go into contents. Then we go into examples. Then we go to animation motion capture, and all we need to do is copy these items across. And so now, if we go back to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, we can see our animation motion capture data available. Now it's time to begin. I have set up a new Maya project with a new dancer scene file. We showed how to set up a project in the first Maya City tutorial, 
which can be seen on the Maya Learning Channel here. Let's go back to Maya. So let's open the Content Browser, which is in Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. I'll just move that over. And in the Examples Animation Motion Capture, we shall open dance1.ma. That loads in. Just need to zoom out using the scroll wheel to show everything. I could have also used the A hotkey. And let's just play to see the animation. Now, remember we are viewing this on a one-year-old MacBook Pro using screen recording software, and it is great to see such smooth playback. So I'm just going to pause this. I'm going to extend the timeline to 260 and zoom out our preview area. Oh. Instead of grabbing the middle, I'm going to grab the end and zoom our preview area to 260. There we go. And I'm going to open the outliner by pressing the Shore Hide Outliner button. As we can see, the dancer is made of a joint skeleton. Just open all these elements here. And that is tied to a skinned geometry here. First of all, let's scale our dancer. The default scale of Maya's grid is 10 centimeters. To scale our dancer down for this scene to make it much more of a toy scale, choose the Dance 1 reference object and in the channel box, let's change the scale values to 0.1. Tab, 0.1, tab, 0.1. There we go. Now we press F to zoom in. To make the most of this motion capture data, let's track it using a Maya camera. Maya is friendlier to new artists in many respects in Cinema 4D. For example, we have options for rigged camera setups such as the camera with the aim command, which makes it easy to make a tracking camera. So let's go to Create, Cameras, Camera and Aim. And a camera and aim locator are created in a new Camera 1 group. As the dancer is paired to a rig, we can place the aim locator within the rig hierarchy to have the locator move with the dancer. Let's press 4 on the keyboard to switch the view to wireframe, and in the outliner, use the middle mouse button to move the camera 1 aim locator to the dance 1 spine 1 joint. There we go. Then in the channel box, let's zero out our translate and rotation. So zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero tab. Okay, great. And as we can see, our camera one aim locator is now placed at the base of the spine and the hip of our dancer. To see what the camera is seeing, click on the viewport and tap the space bar. This switches the view into four views, or we could use the four view icon at the left side of the screen. We can use another tap on the space bar to make the viewport that the cursor is hovering over full screen. So for example, if I wanted the front view, tap on the space bar, See the front view, tap on the space bar to go back again. If we press the space bar, we see this handy menu called the hotbox appear under the cursor, which gives access to all of the main functionality of Maya, such as here's all my mesh display options. Getting to know this menu could radically speed up working with Maya as you get quick access to all the core functionality. Select the camera one object in the outliner and press the A key to zoom out in the three ortho views. A, A, A. I could also use Shift A to zoom out on all four views at the same time, but it's useful to know that you can do each window individually using the A key. In the perspective view, go to Panels, Perspective, and Camera 1. This shows the view that the camera is actually seeing. Let's use the W key to switch on the Move tool and move Camera 1 to a position where we can see the dancer. So. In my top view, I'm going to pull it back. That's great. And in my side view, just going to elevate it slightly to give us a bit more height. Let's just press the render settings. And in the image size, let's make sure that we are set to HD 1080. There we go. Close that. And I'm just going, in my perspective view, go to view camera settings, resolution gate. And this gives me a 
clear outline of exactly what the camera will see in my final render. So we're going to go back into our perspective view, tap the space bar, and let's switch our shading off into smooth shade all, and let's press play. And as we can see, our camera is tracking our dancer. The camera is a little close and it's not in a good position to see all of the dancers move. We should also change the focal length of the camera so we can see more of the background for the dancing writing, which we will add later. With the camera one object selected, instead of going to the attribute editor and select the camera one shape as we have done before, let's use the node editor to make it easier to select an object's attributes. The node editor works exactly the same way as the node paradigm in Hypershade when working with materials. The node editor is available at Windows Node Editor. I like to dock the node editor at the bottom of my screen, so I'm just going to, there we go, bang. So that I can hide and show it just by tapping on the node editor tab title. There we go, I'll just pull it up. I really like this way of working with tabbed views in Maya when compared to Cinema 4D. It makes building a custom UI, which is all the information that I need, and can be got quickly out of the way when I don't need it. And I can save my workspace as well. So I've got all my outliner here, my node editor here, and I'm just going to add a mash editor. Even though we don't have any mash elements at the moment, I'm just going to dock this in the side and just hide that, and I'm going to go to Windows, Workspaces, save current workspace as Maya Classic hyphen mic. Okay, and so that is now available as an option. I can go back to my Maya Classic, and now Workspaces, Maya Classic mic with my MASH editor there, my Node editor here, my outliner here. Okay, so we are now going to open our node editor. Oops, scroll that up so that we can see it. Making sure our camera one object is selected. Let's make a new tab and press on our input and output connections button here. And this loads in all the elements for our camera. If we switch it to attribute editor, we can see that we are selecting each one of our individual elements. While effectively the node editor is doing the same job as the attribute editor's tabs, I find using the node editor a much more powerful and easier way of navigating the scene. As I can save tab views, see the options available in each node, as well as accessing the properties of any selected node by clicking on it. In the node editor, make sure we have our camera shape one object selected. In the attribute editor, let's change its focal length to 28 millimeters. That's better. And using the W key, what already have, to activate the move tool and tap the space bar, go back to four views and move the camera object back so that it can always see the dancer's feet. So in our top view, just going to close our node editor there. That's better. So I'm just going to scrub through the animation. So the top view. Scrub through the animation in a perspective just to make sure we can always see the dancer's feet. That's better in terms of framing, but I just want to make sure that the dancer is moving from side to side in the view. So in the top view, let's just play this. So this way I can see which way the, cam the dancer is actually moving. Okay. So I think my camera is gonna be better positioned over here, but because we have the camera set always to point at our camera one aim locator, 
our framing is always going to be consistent and that's good from the top view because we can see a lot more movement so let's just stop that and there we go in our perspective view yes that's much better we can see our feet we can see the dancer moving from right to left and we can see the full range of movement I'm going to tap on the spacebar to go back into full view. Also remember, if the playback is too fast, always remember to check that the playback speed is to the setting that you want. And we do this by, just in the timeline here, right-clicking and making sure our playback speed is play every frame max real time, which I have set here. If you do play every frame free, it will play as fast as Maya can go, which as you can see here is very fast. So Let's switch that back to playback speed, max play every frame, max real time. And that's much better. Let's create a studio for our dancer to perform in. All we need is a simple stage object. So let's switch away from the camera view by going into panels, perspective, oh, persp, there we go. And in the polygon shelf, Let's create a cube. Let's select the R key to scale it and let's just make it slightly larger. Oh, might just press four to switch this into wireframe. Let's make it quite a bit bigger. Let's just play our animation so that we can see if we've got enough space. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Just going to switch back to solid view, smooth shade all. I could I could have also pressed the number five to do that. And I'm going to right click in the viewport and switch to face mode. And I'm going to select the top polygon and delete it. I'm now also going to select the remaining polygons and reverse their polygon so that they're facing inwards. So I'm going to go to Mesh Display and Reverse. That's great, there we go. I'm going to switch on the Grid Snap, which is up here, and select the Base Polygon, and using the W tool, I'm going to move that up. And to add some beveled edges so that we have a nice continuous surface, I'm going to right-click and switch into Edge Mode, not move anything and just select these shift select all these bottom edges so I now have all those corners selected press up here the hammer in this cube icon to switch to modeling toolkit and press on the bevel button here and I'm going to make sure our fraction is set to 0.35 and our segments are set to 6 and then we have a great nice smooth studio let's just play to make sure we have enough room remember we can use Maya's non-destructive tool set which works with polygon objects to adjust the bevel later if needed which just isn't simply possible in Cinema 4D without starting the bevel from scratch And in our outliner, I'm just going to change our P cube one and hit enter and rename it studio. 